In the mid-1950s, conformity was at its height. More than 10 million paint-by-number kits were sold each year. Society lived by the numbers and stayed within the lines. Homosexual culture existed only in codes and subtext, hidden between the lines. Once I had a secret love, a secret, secret love that lived within the heart of me, within the heart of me. And she arrived, and she had on, you know, open-toed pumps and, and a little green gabardine suit, and she was carrying a briefcase. And never before had I seen a woman carrying a briefcase. I had a party at my apartment for her and invited all the folks from work. And she spent most of her time in the kitchen with the guys who were trying to teach her how to tie a tie and smoking cigars. She said I was her good, straight friend. But she always accused me of flirting with her, too. <laughs> and uh, flirted with everybody. <laughs> in the bars, you were just interested in getting drunk <laughs> and in uh, finding a partner. I think the contribution that Dell and Phil made was tremendous in the founding DOB and helping people get out of the bars and organize and try to do something worthwhile as a group. We've seen change that we never thought would happen in our lifetime. The fact that we're sitting here talking like this is a miracle to us. <laughs> There's no secret anymore. Never in the world could we have dreamed of the gay games or whether we'd be electing our own people or... Whether we'd be marching on Washington. Marching on Washington or any of that. You have to be involved in politics and that is where change has come about that I have seen in the last 50 years. Yeah.